This is the first of several videos on atomic structure and periodicity. This video deals with electromagnetic radiation, more commonly known as light. You've learned some of the stuff in physics. This may be review, but I don't want to make that assumption that you know all this stuff, so I'm going to go through it. Um, we're going to talk about light and the math involving light and a little bit of knowledge about uh, how light interacts with matter, because that's critical in terms of understanding uh, what happens in the atom and how we use light to probe the atom, essentially. Okay, so let's talk about the two waves, wave A and wave B. So wave A, okay, has the longer of the two wavelengths. And if you don't remember, that's from, you know, crest to crest or from trough to trough. So wave A has a wavelength about twice that of wave B. We could sit there and count or something like that, but that's what we would find. Now, all light travels at the same speed, the speed of light, 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And there's this very simple relationship uh, between wavelength and what is termed frequency. Now, frequency is given in hertz, which is really, um, you know, s to the minus 1, basically. It's the number of waves that pass a point per second. Now, since all these waves are, are traveling at the exact same speed, what that means is if you have a long wavelength, like this one here, if your wavelength is long, then you're going to have a low frequency. And that's still the funny-looking V there, all right? Whereas if you look at wave B, wave B has a short wavelength, and that means more waves are going to pass per second. So it's going to have a higher, okay, uh, frequency of waves passing per second. We'll do math with this later, but right now I just want to talk about the relationships. Now, the other relationship here uh, is this thing right here is the delta. E stands for energy. The H stands for Planck's constant, and there's frequency again. And what you want to recognize here is since a constant is constant, then the relation between frequency and energy is a direct one. So in other words, for let's say the first, if you compare the two waves we have here, wave A has a low frequency. So if this value is low, then the energy is going to be low. So this wave A has less energy associated with it. Whereas the second wave has more energy. So this has got this has this is a higher energy uh, wave that's passing. And the energy associated with these waves will affect how they interact with matter. So some types of light can go right through matter, like x-rays. Some types of light do not go through matter. And they cause different things to happen to the matter, which we're going to talk about on the next page when we look at the spectrum. Now the last uh, formula is not given to you in the AP. So this formula is on the AP exam. This one's on the AP exam. But a lot of times they'll give you a question which they, they ask for the amount of energy, but they give you the wavelength. So you have to do a substitution. So if you move the little wave symbol over here, the lambda over there, uh, and substitute, you can substitute the V over here for this and get basically C over wavelength, okay? And that will give you, um, and using Planck's constant, which is right here, and you multiply that out and you can get the energy associated with um, a particular wave. So let's look at um, different parts of the spectrum. Now, if you look at this thing, it depends upon where you look for the spectrum. Like this one is given to you from basically long wavelength to short wavelength. So um, I'm sorry, I got that backwards. This starts over here with very short wavelengths. These have very long wavelengths. Radio waves are the longest, biggest waves, which means they have the lowest energy waves. So make sure you're clear. As we go in this direction here, okay, the the waves are getting uh, shorter wavelength, right? And that means as we go there, we're going to a higher energy. Which hopefully by now you know like x-rays and gamma rays are high energy forms of light. Okay, so what do they do when they interact with matter? Well, they do different things. So if you look at A, right here between microwaves and infrared, this usually causes molecular rotations. I don't really care too much about it, but it does show up in the AP exam, so I'm throwing it out at you. Okay? When you get to B, um, that causes molecular vibrations. So when you start getting from, you go from microwaves and you get into infrared, you start getting uh, vibrations in the molecules. So molecules uh, vibrate faster. And this is why, so, and, this, and, and also, you know, um, it's a way of losing here. So, so make sure this works coming and going. So if you absorb infrared, the molecules will move faster. If you're releasing infrared, you're losing heat and the, the molecules are moving slower. And that's why they use infrared imagery and cameras uh, to see people in the dark because they're giving off heat, right? An infrared camera wouldn't work very well if you were looking at, let's say, a 
crocodile that's cold-blooded. But if you're trying to see, um, you know, your enemy, let's say, on the battlefield, um, you know, you have infrared goggles, you can see, basically, the heat being given off their bodies, and you can image them, okay? As they do that, their molecules might be slowing down a bit, but, you know, that's all homeostasis, whatever. C. This is the, the C and D are probably the ones that are more important in terms of chemistry, in terms of what we're going to understand. C, when you get into the visible range, up to into the ultraviolet range, that starts causing electron transitions. What I mean by that, that's when electron in energy level number one, okay, can now jump up to energy level number two by absorbing a very specific uh, wavelength of light with a very specific amount of energy. Conversely, okay, if he jumps back down, he will emit that same vis color of light. So the transitions between, the differences between these energy levels correspond to uh, wavelengths of light that fall within the visible or the ultraviolet uh, spectrum, okay? If you're, if you're jumping from the first, if you're jumping, let's say, from the third energy level all the way down to the first, you might be giving off um, a high energy visible light, like uh, blue or violet. Okay, you might even uh, switch at some point into the ultraviolet range. Okay, if you're making a large jump from a high energy level down to a lower one. By the same token, that means if you were to add UV or visible light, it will jump up a lot of levels. Now, once you get past a certain point in the UV spectrum, then you get into what's called ionizing radiation. And what this means is, I mean, you have to understand, like an electron that's in this level right here has a certain amount of energy, right? And the only thing holding this electron is the positively charged pole of the nucleus, right? And all you have to do, if you add enough energy, you can literally just rip that apart. I mean, there's forces of attraction, what they call Coulombic forces, holding that electron, okay, to the nucleus, right? If you zap it, you know, with, with some sort of high, like some x-rays or some ultraviolet light, Right? It's not just going to jump up, it's just going to take off, right? So when you get into this high, when you get to, when you get to the ionizing end of the spectrum, you can basically remove electrons from atoms. Um, the other thing that happens up here is you can, you can often break bonds this way, right? Often the energy here is great enough that bonds will actually be broken. Um, and we'll, we'll see that later on. We'll talk more about that later. So this final part of the video deals with a standard type of question using the equations from the first slide in the video. Um, supposing you have like a type of fireworks like uh, copper, one chloride, which is what this stuff is, is often put into fireworks. It gives you this beautiful blue light. Um, and the light, the wavelength of the light given off is like 450 nanometers. And let's say you want to know how much energy is associated with a photon, okay, of that light a single photon, or you want to know what, how much energy is associated with a mole of photons. You can answer both of those questions. Um, the first thing you really have to do is convert the nanometers uh, of the wavelength into meters because you're going to end up using uh, the 2.998 uh, times 10 to the 8th meters per second uh, to figure out to convert the wavelength into a frequency. So when you do that, you basically get, you know, uh, 450 times 10 to the negative ninth meters which is basically 4.50 times 10 to the minus 7 uh, meters. So that's the wavelength of blue light given off by copper 1 chloride fireworks when they get excited to about a temperature of 1,200 degrees Celsius. Uh, how much energy is associated with that? Well, you basically can take the formula, which is C equals wavelength times frequency, and you can move stuff around. So you basically end up with the value of C, which is 2.998. Uh, times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Put that over the wavelength, which is 4.5 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Divide through, and that gives you 6.66 times 10 to the 14th uh, seconds to the minus one, because the seconds don't cancel out, but the meters do. And that's your frequency. And then you can plug that into the E, uh, right, equals HV formula there, and basically take this number here, which is your frequency, seconds minus one is the same as hertz, basically. Multiply that by um, <clears throat> 6.626 times 10 to the uh, minus 34. That is, by the way, on the reference tables. So you don't have to memorize that. Uh, joules s to the minus one. Um, joule, I'm sorry, joules second, my mistake there. Okay, and the seconds basically cancel out. You get your answer in joules, so you end up with 4. 41 times 10 to the 
negative 19th joules. If you want to know how much energy will be given off, um, if a mole of those uh, of those photons of light were emitted, you would just basically take that and multiply that answer by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, uh, you know, uh, photons per mole. Okay, and that would give you your answer in joules per mole of those photons, which I'm not going to give the answer to because the question just gave me that. All right, that's the end of that video.